My name is Sarah. Welcome to the It is a Sarah podcast. Today it is Monday, March 25, 2024, and this is episode 133. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutch English. I love to knit, I love to crochet, and I love to talk. So that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. I make my episodes in Dutch and in English, so be sure you pick the right one. Okay, let's dive into my handwerk perikelen, my crafty adventures from last week. And I want to start with what I'm wearing. Um, I'm wearing an older cardigan. I think I finished this cardigan in at the end of 2022. It is the Sunday cardigan, a petite knit pattern, and it's absolutely one of my favorite items in my wardrobe. Um, I knitted this cardigan in Alavas Lopi. That's an Icelandic bulky weight yarn. It's very rustic um, and I love the feeling. It's the big brother of the Let Lopi yarn, which is my favorite. Uh, and I really, I really love this cardigan. It's such a warm woolly layer. Um, the pattern uh, is actually meant to be uh, for a shorter cardigan and I did knit uh, my cardigan shorter than it, it is right now but when i uh, started wearing it i was so um uh, it, it was so nice to cover me up in in a warm woolly layer that i uh, quite soon thought i need more i need more of this warm woolly layer i also want this part covered up in in warm rustic wool <laughs> So I uh, ripped out the, the ribbing and added quite some centimeters and now it's a long cardigan and I'm very happy with it. I always wear it open fronted. I have no buttons or buttonholes and it's, it's just perfect. I really want to make another one um, maybe next winter in a darker color because yeah, I just love it. Did I say I love it? <laughs> okay, um, so. This week I have two finished objects, two small ones. Um, I also uh, did receive a little gift, which is really hard jumping and I want to share it with you. And I have some uh, something to say about my Arctic light sweater, or actually not my Arctic light sweater, but the Arctic light for my daughter. <coughs> and um, oh, there's also uh, some cleaning news I want to share with you. <laughs> Okay, let's dive in. I want to start with my first finish, finished object. It's a small one. And um, uh, last week uh, I mainly knitted. I, I didn't have a lot of knitting time, but I mainly knitted on the blue rabbit for my little niece. And um, I won't deep dive into the blue rabbit process too much right now because I really hope, no, I, I, I don't actually hope, it. I must finish it uh, uh, before the next episode because her birthday is already. Um, but I want to share the hat for a tiny moment because it's so cute. I must confess that I never could have believed that I would enjoy knitting a blue rabbit so much that a blue rabbit would be so hard jumping to me. I I thought I was a person that didn't that didn't that don't like um, knitting stuffies and I don't like blue. So knitting a blue rabbit was quite a thing, but it's so 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 much fun. It's a pattern by Julie Williams and it's an amazing pattern. And I will deep dive into it when the the bunny, the rabbit is finished. Um, we are not there yet. I did knit some pieces for the body, um, but they they are under construction. But um, uh, last week uh, I was very busy and um, I th uh, in the evening, I think it was Thursday evening, I thought, oh, I want to knit on my rabbit, but it was I have quite an administration in my knitting book to uh, to be sure I don't forget any rows and to to count the correct uh, numbers and whatever. And it was not a moment for that. We were with all the family and watching television. There was happening a lot, a lot of busyness around me, and I couldn't concentrate concentrate on that pattern. It's not complicated, but there's happening a lot in the pattern, and I I had to focus on that. Um, but I thought I really want to make something 
for the rabbit because uh, um, the birthday is already there. And then I realized rabbits need blankets too. So I crocheted a little blanket and it's really, really lovely and funny. A little tiny granny stripe blanket. And I, I want to show you one of my most heart jumping things. When you make a, a granny stripe blanket, try to roll, roll Try to roll it once. Uh, rolled granny stripes blankets are hard jumping. It's really, it's they feel so nice, they look so nice, and it's really fun. Let me see my notes. Um, I wanted to make a blanket, and I found a few uh, colors in my stash. They are cotton yarns, and I have no idea what they exactly are, but they are from Lang Yarns, and. Um, I really love them. This one I used for the border. It's a wool addict. And um, the base of all is cotton. Uh, I used the pattern from Lucy from Attic24, the Granny Stripes blanket. And uh, to make a doll size, I cast it on this way uh, with a 3.5 millimeter needle, 53 stitches. Um, and then I followed the pattern and I thought it was a good idea um, uh, the, the blanket was 30 centimeters wide, so I thought it would be a good idea to make it um, 40 centimeters long to have the right shape for a blanket. Maybe it's a little bit too long. I, I'm not quite sure. Maybe I had to, maybe it was better when it was 35. I don't know. But um, uh, I really enjoyed making this blanket. It's really lovely. And I made a little scalloped border. I love doing that with a light pink and it's really it's really fun i love granny stripes so much and and little blankets they are finished so soon it was very nice that i just have had uh, i just found some nice colors in my stash and i could turn them into a, a little doll blanket or a little rabbit blanket in this case because i did have some doubts if i wanted to keep this yarn because what, what would I do with it? But now it's really granny stripes and granny squares. They are always working out. So a little blanket. My bunny doesn't have uh, a body or legs or arms yet. But <laughs> she has a blanket. <laughs> um, I used 90 gram of the yarns uh, in total for the blanket. So you could make one in one color with only uh, uh, a skein, a 100 gram skein DK weight yarn. It will work out, but a colored one, it's, uh, it's yeah, a, a, a plain one is also nice, but making a colored one is more exciting, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and that's what I love. I love the color combinations in Granny Stripes very much. Yeah. Okay. So I will work on the rabbits the rest of the week, and I hope to show you the uh, finished object next episode. I have another finished object. Um, it's a head. This is my fourth uh, classic ripped head by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern and um, I really love this pattern. It's so easy. It's really uh, a nice, satisfying, relaxing knitting uh, project. Um, I didn't really uh, knit heads before. Every now and then I made one, but I was not really a head knitter. But I must confess that since I discovered this pattern, I really uh, uh, enjoy it because it's the perfect project for knitting up scraps and also the perfect project to put in your bag sack when you have I have a project bag with a knitting project in my bag sack always for some unexpected or expected expected waiting time or traveling time or chatting time or telephoning time or whatever for time it's nice to have an easy peasy project uh, around you, <laughs> close, nearby, always. And uh, I always used socks for that, but this is uh, uh, pretty good to also have uh, uh, on the needles, especially because I want to fill my gift box, a present box uh, at the end of the year with all handmade socks and hats so I can share them with my family and friends. I have no idea how much uh, uh, there will be in the box, <laughs> but we shall see. This one is not was not really meant to be as a gift. This one was actually meant to be for myself. I am not a hat person. My hair and hats are not a good combination. 
Uh, and uh, also when I put a hat on my head, I, I look very weird. The, the hair, the curls are such a big part of my identity. When I discover them under, no, not discover. When I cover them under a hat, there's not much Sarah left. <laughs> Probably my identity is in the hair <laughs> the most. <laughs> um, but I uh, uh, received a special skein uh, in November. It was a gift for my birthday. Uh, I celebrated my birthday in Prague last year because we uh, spent there some time because of a rugby tournament of our son. And we uh, were there together with a lot of other people. And um, there was a lovely yarn shop in the street of our apartment, the Yarn Queen. And um, uh, our friends uh, visited the yarn shop too, and they bought a lovely skein for me. And that was really hard jumping. I, I would never have bought that skein myself because it was so colorful. Uh, but that's the fun of uh, receiving yarn uh, as a gift. Um, because I really did like knitting with it. And uh, I also really did like the, uh, do like the colors. It's quite warm and autumnally brown and orange and yellow and pink and purple, green. It's really, really lovely. It was fun to knit on the head. The only problem, the problem is it's not really... Um, uh, I knew I am not a head person, but I thought when it's really cold, it can be nice to have a head to put on my head. And uh, maybe I, it, it does look a little bit silly, but I have warm ears then. But I don't know if that will happen. I felt very unhappy with the head on my head. Um, it's a very, very long tube. You cast on a, a specific t amount of stitches. The pattern is there in all sizes. And I chose uh, for the adult small size this time, um, my yarn. I forgot to share the details about my yarn. My yarn is a Malabrigo yarn. And it is, let me see. I think you say Arrojo. I don't know. My Spanish is not existing. Um, Arrojo yarn. Uh, it's a, a DK sport weight uh, merino uh, superwash wool, woolly yarn. It's 100 gram, 306 meters, and it's a it's no dye lot. It's a, a single lot. So I think that's a special seri. I didn't. Uh, I couldn't find it on Ravelry. Uh, so um, uh, I, I I don't think it's really an, an existing colorway. Maybe they use it up for all the little pieces of um, uh, dye they they are left. I don't know. I don't know exactly, but uh, it's really lovely. Um, and because uh, it's a, a DK slash sport weight yarn, I um, decided that I uh, went. Uh, down a needle size. Uh, I'm a very relaxed knitter, so I knitted this one on 2.5 millimeter needles. You knit, uh, knit one purl one uh, quite uh, uh, a long time. And uh, that makes it such an easy uh, knitting project because you are just knitting a knit one purl one tube. It's perfect also for a beginner knitter. And then at a specific high, uh, you um, uh, start decreasing for the crown. I really love how the crown is looking. And my only problem with this pattern was that when I followed the pattern and I knitted the amount of centimeters the pattern said, it was always a bit too short. I really love a good folded brim. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wanted to be a bit more slouchy, I guess. And I every time I added a few centimeters, but it was still not very big. Um, so this time I decided that I just uh, uh, added, I would add, I, I, I did add an, um, two less centimeters. So I had to rip out the crown and re -knit it, it. But I um, ended with uh, a length of the tube for of 30 centimeters. So that was, I think the pattern says 23, but I'm not sure. Quite some uh, extra centimeters. But I'm not really sure 
uh, if now if it's now too long <laughs> it's not too short anymore i'm for sure uh, that's for sure but um yeah i don't know maybe it's a combination of the length and my head because when i put it on my daughter's head and on my son's head and on my husband's head it was all looking pretty good and really nice but only on my head it was looking a bit weird but now i'm thinking of uh, knitting myself a headband uh, from the leftover yarn because i really do like to have something extra warm and i i don't mean a headband as if i always wear in my hair a, a bit of a decorative piece but more a warm piece so it it looks a bit like this this now the top of the head is <laughs> is uh, hidden in uh, in between so it's a bit thick but a headband you put over your ears maybe i can better say ear warmers so i think i will uh, knit that with uh, with the leftover yarn so i still have a piece for myself this one i will add to my gift box but it will stay in the house i won't give it uh, I, I will give it to my husband or to one of the kids not uh, to uh, other family or friends because this special yarn reminds me uh, of the special week and the lovely week we had in prague and the lovely people i uh, I, I received it from and um i don't want to give it away <laughs> So, uh, and it's also nice when it's in the house, I can still wear it when it's really cold. So it's not really my head, but I have a head I can put on. So, really lovely and also nice to finish, uh, to finish it. I had a long list of works in progress and I, I, I really love uh, finishing a project. It always gives me a heart jumping feeling. And uh, I really feel the need to cast on all the spring projects. But before I will do that, I uh, I want to uh, um, uh, finish some works in progress. And uh, there are still too many of my needles to cast on something new. So we have to wait. Uh, maybe one week, maybe two. This week will be Blue Rabbit week. And then no, maybe within two weeks. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe somewhere in April. Okay, I also received a little gift and I think I put it here. Yeah, uh, it's very lovely. Um, I um, know there are a, a lot of funny and cozy things you can add to your knitting or crochet work. Stitch markers, row counters, um, needle stoppers, whatever. You have them in very funny and beautiful uh, variations. Um, but I'm not, I'm a bit boring when it comes to that. I I did receive a lot of beautiful stitch markers and, all, and also uh, needle stoppers and whatever. But mm, I don't know. I, I, I just love, I just prefer plain stitch markers on my work. And uh, yeah, I, I don't really use them. Um, but I could use some needle stoppers and when I uh, visited a knitting event in last year October I found some really lovely tiny flowered white flowers with a yellow heart um, and uh, they, they really make me happy every time I see them on my needles and they are very practical too because my stitches flew off the needles quite often and I could fix that quite easily but um, it works better when you have needle stoppers. I know that now. Uh, so uh, they uh, were making me so happy that when I visited uh, another knitting event in February, someone was selling the same flowers, but then pink with beige. And I uh, bought another set. And I remember myself thinking, oh, why don't they have them in brown? I would love to have them in brown. And uh, last week I saw on Instagram in the stories of a Dutch knitter, she did have those brown flowers, stitch uh, needle stoppers. So I sent her a message, do you buy them? <laughs> and she said, no, but I want, uh, I want to give them to you because she told me she loves watching my episodes and um, uh, she would love to send, me, uh, send them to me. And that was really heart jumping because she really gave, gave me some lovely and nice words. And, and then the, she sent me the stitch, no, the needle stoppers. And now I'm the proud owner of two brown flowery needle stoppers. They are so lovely.
absolutely heart jumping so i'm really happy with those so i put them on those needles so i will cast on the ear warmers quite soon um uh, it is nice to knit this whole skein away so i don't have a leftover in my stash it's just i just knitted it up in lovely things so um uh, although it is not summer yet uh winter yet uh, i will be knit it for next winter Okay, before I want to share you more about the sweater, um, I want to share a little other thing because um, <laughs> I, I last week I uploaded my uh, 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 my first Huiskamer flight video on my YouTube channel. Huiskamer flight is not really a Dutch word; it's a little bit of a playful combination I made myself. Uh, but it is about my housekeeping, about my cleaning process in the house. Um, I really have a big desire for a, uh, uh, a very organized and clean house for quite some years. And I really want to do that in a way that it's so efficient that it doesn't cost me a lot of time. But it is very nice and organized and clean. And I have a lot of knitting and crochet time left. Um, and that's uh, a desire, uh, more than 10 years ago, I discovered uh, decluttering and minimalism and that really resonated with me. And also then uh, I discovered some uh, cleaning systems. There was a Dutch cleaning system, but also the Fly Lady system. And they, they made me very happy. And um, our, uh, do you say housekeeping? I think housekeeping. I don't know if that's the right word. In Dutch, we call it huishouden. So literally, that is housekeeping. Um, but our housekeeping is is good. We have uh, our house is quite organized and it's also quite clean. We do live in a small house with five people and a dog. So what I clean in the morning will be dirty in the evening. So that's an ongoing process. Um, and that's okay. I have quite good daily and weekly routines. Um, so it's always okay. And I think a lot of people would be very happy with the way our housekeeping is. But I really, I really want to be a pro. I really want to be a professional. And I really want to be very good. And, and, and I want to go to the next step. But it's not really working out. And um, I did play with it. And the desire is still there although i i try to tell myself ah, it's okay this way just do your knitting and crochet it's okay um, don't spend too much time on your housekeeping but i still want to do it and i think um i got a lot of inspiration out of my uh housekeeping it's really my cleaning fire burning brings me a lot of joy and nice insights and a clean house so i really i really want to do that and a little voice is telling me all the time that um i will make it to the next step if i will share my cleaning process but uh, i did try that i have an, a huiskamer flight instagram account uh, and uh, I think about two years ago, I really shared my daily cleaning 50 minutes and I made little videos, little reels. And I really loved doing that. And it was good for my process because my cleaning fire was burning and it was uh, all flowing and it was really nice. And my house was looking so good and I was really happy about that. But then summer holidays started and it was all gone when we came home, when we came back home and it never came really back. And I, I, that little voice kept telling me, you have to share your process, make videos of it. But I didn't really want to because making videos is quite time consuming and I really love doing that. But I, I was okay with only doing that for my uh, knitting and crochet. That's enough. But the voice didn't shut up. <laughs> it keeps uh, telling it me. And then, okay, I thought maybe it's meant to be. Just dive in. Let go all your resistance. Resistance? Resistance? I don't know if that's the good word. Um, let go all your thoughts. Why you wouldn't do it? Just do it. So I have no plan. I just will make it happen. I do know that following my heart 
brings me the most difficult jobs every now and then, but also the most the best results. So I am following my heart and uh, I will share my cleaning process. I don't know how, I don't know when. Maybe it will work out, maybe not. I will just let it happen. It's just a little bit of playing. So I will share it on this channel too. There's no knitting in it. You only will see my house and you will see Sarah cleaning. And if that's not your cup of tea, that's absolutely perfect. Uh, but um, you know, every time you see, <laughs> you see a video posted, you know, Sarah's cleaning fire is burning. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be lovely if your cleaning fire is also burning. So feel free to give me some advice or share some thoughts about it. Uh, or uh, maybe you have some, uh, some good suggestions. Uh, I really, uh, I really would love to hear that. Uh, yeah, okay. But it is hard jumping for me. So then you know why you uh, might see every, uh, such a video every now and then. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the knitting. The Arctic light sweater. I want to give it a, a little bit attention right now because we are a few weeks further and it's always very interesting uh, when you have a finished object and you come back to it later because now um, uh, there is some wearing experience and um, I uh, am very happy to tell you that my daughter wear this sweater all, wears this sweater all the time. She really loves it. The fit is perfect. I had my doubts about the raglan shape. Not necessary. The fit is perfect. It's looking good on her. The fit is nice. It's really lovely. Uh, the only thing, and I did expect that for a little bit because the softness of the yarn the only thing is that it's quite pilling i knitted it with Filcolana peruvian highland wool and i know how the softer the yarn the bigger the the bigger chance of pilling and that is happening especially under the uh, under the arms maybe i can show it to you i don't know if you can see it how it shows up on camera. Do you see all the pilling, all the fluff? Um, that is happening. So uh, I will um, uh, pick my D-pillar. I have a little thing and I will show the D-pill process with you so you can see um, how uh, I do that. And it's not, it's not exciting. It's just a little bit of slow television at the end of the episode. Um, uh, so I will give... Uh, uh, this sweater a good detail job and then it can back it can go back in her wardrobe and she can wear it again because uh, it's still chilly enough to wear a warm sweater yeah but really hard jumping project and i can really recommend this pro uh, this pattern absolutely that was it for today. I will uh, say goodbye to you. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for all the lovely words, words all the lovely comments, all the nice messages you gave me uh, every time. Um, I will spend my knitting time mainly uh, on the Blue Rabbit this week and I hope to share uh, the finished Blue Rabbit with you next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you have some wonderful heart jumping moments this week. And uh, don't forget, if you can't find them, create them. Bye bye.